Well, here we are, back again. And uh, for those of you who uh, have decided to stay for this last uh, couple of minutes, um, let me say that I'm pleased to have been able to uh, go over uh, John's uh, presentation, at least the uh, number of the slides which he has shared with you. And um, all I can say is that I see uh, nothing wrong with that. Uh, other than uh, the fact that uh, we've got this short run problem that we have to deal with. Um, as, as I'm trying to explain to my MBA class, uh, uh, sustainable development is about two things, uh, essentially. And if those of you who remember the Club of Rome uh, a few years after we graduated, uh, actually after we graduated from university, actually after we did our advanced uh, studies, um, the Club of Rome was about uh, running out of resources. And uh, uh, they, to the team that was responsible for that, uh, took a theory of, uh, uh, of a professor at MIT, Jay Forrester, and they drew curves, you know, draw a lot of curves, uh, draw some curves and uh, uh, then uh, somebody knows something, but uh, they might not do anything differently. In any event, the Club of Rome are uh, worried about running out of resources, running out of everything. And so um, today, 40 years later, uh, we, we now worry about running out and running over. Mm -hmm. Running out of uh, drinkable water, uh, running out of... Uh, uh, land which can be farmed or running out of uh, um, petroleum resources, affordable petroleum resources, uh, running out of uh, um, rare uh, earth minerals, running out of so very many things, you know. So running out is part of our problem. And the other one is, of course, the other part of the problem is running over, you know, uh, 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 running over the atmosphere uh, uh, through our, our, our pathology of uh, inefficient uh, technologies and uh, hyper uh, bulimy uh, for conservation. Uh, uh, these two things combine and they create the problematic that we call a sustainable development. Uh, and uh, one little thing uh, that's uh, just about to happen at the same time uh, we meet here, and that is that uh, if you take a look at the population clocks, we're just about ready to tick over to 7 billion people. Uh, that's a big number. You know, when we were born, there were about 2.5 billion people. So we've kind of multiplied by three, uh, but we haven't gotten three times smarter than we were back then. So um, uh, what happens when you divide any number by any quantity uh, by 7 billion? It's a small number. Uh, try it. Uh, uh, run the exercise for yourself in terms of uh, um, what your fair share, whatever that means, uh, of uh, whatever the resource is. And you divide it by 7 billion and you say, how would I, how would I be able to get by uh, with 1 7 billionth of of the available energy production of the planet. You know, how, how would I arrange my life with that? Uh, 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 do I have to uh, move back into a cave? Uh, maybe, maybe. Uh, uh, let, let, let's take a look at a, let's take a look at something that may be a ray of uh, light in this, and that is uh, I call it the future of the automobile in the city. So this summer is not only the uh, advent of the 7 billionth person on the planet, uh, but it is also the 125th anniversary of the, uh, the first uh, automobile that uh, 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 Mr. Benz uh, put on the streets in Stuttgart. Uh, 125 years, and over that 125 years, that technology has served us well and, 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 and reshaped our lives and reshaped our, reshaped our perceptions and certainly reshaped, reshaped our cities. Uh, it got us away from something that was very agreeable and that in the past and that is still very agreeable today. Uh, 
We oriented our society as a result of technology towards speed and distance. And what happens is that all of the aspects of society which depend on propinquity and, and a certain slowness, you know, for example, a livable city or even a happy family who need to have time together. And, and this time is stolen by the arrangements that we've made thanks to automobiles and other forms of travel in which we can move so far, so fast. But when we move far and fast, we're usually moving away from something and maybe something which is very important. So there we have uh, Los Angeles, uh, Detroit, uh, uh, Beijing. I, I should show you, if I were a little bit better organized, I should show you uh, some of our wonderful pictures uh, of uh, what's happening in Beijing in which they build ring roads to, relu um, to uh, reduce the stress of traffic and, and congestion. And uh, they're now building their eighth ring road and they're all filled. And uh, how can people so smart as that uh, not learn the lesson uh, that uh, anything you build will get, will get filled up, will be used? So uh, these, are, these are some of the background details. Now, so, but what happens is if you take a look at the leading edge and there are a hundred cities which you can look at around the world, they're beginning to change the name of the game in terms of the use and even the ownership of cars and cities. So a number of the cities that are dealing well with their transportation problems are faced with the fact that an increasingly smaller proportion of the population even bothers to have a car. And, and this happens, of course, uh, because uh, several forms of reorganization have occurred. First of all, that there is adequate alternative transportation, mobility. But also, second, that the cities uh, retain this whole concept of proximity so that there are a lot of things you can do without needing your 2,000 pound best friend. So uh, uh, what's going on? What's going on is there are fewer people uh, owning and using cars in cities. There are alternative ways of getting around, one of them being cars. For example, car sharing, but uh, also uh, ride sharing and also different forms of taxis. You know, it would seem to me that in any city of the world, we should have at least a dozen different forms of taxis, which uh, create jobs and which create transportation, which relates to the problematique of 21st century life. So we're going to see fewer cars in cities, which means less pollution, less congestion, less energy consumption. And now if only we can find a way to take some of these good ideas and spread them over less dense areas. So there's some interesting work that's going on on that. And so it means that uh, if today there are, what is it, 800 million cars and trucks and buses out there, and that uh, this, uh, the growth rate of the sector is not uh, decreasing, um, uh, will we see 1 billion cars soon? Probably too soon. But nonetheless, there will be a new curve that will come into play, which will show people how they can live without their, their love affair uh, with the car, which has shaped their lives, which has shaped my life, and which I'm sure has shaped your lives. So we get to the end of the day. We get back to John Maynard Keynes. In the long run, we all are dead. And my call uh, for doing something about this in the course of the next four or five years. And also my very serious proposition that uh, if we don't, um, the decline, the slide that will continue and our children and our children's children will be less well served. So uh, what do we need about it? Well, we need to talk to our leaders and we like, need to talk to our opinion leaders. And we say, you know, Mr. Gore, Glad you had your Nobel Prize. You know, that was really very nice for you. And you did some good work for it. You, you raised consciousness, but you're a rotten example. And, and the only way that you can be meaningful now is to become a better example. So Mr. Gore, or whoever it happens to be, uh, Mr. Obama, uh, Mr. Sarkozy, Mr. David Cameron, let's uh, uh, not uh, even try 
uh, with uh, Berlusconi or a number of uh, the tyrants uh, who continue to be in existence and plaguing us. Uh, we need to have examples from our leadership as to a high quality lifestyle with a low quality uh, footprint on the, on the planet. So, so let, me, let me end with that. And let me, let me say that personally, uh, as I've tried to reduce my ecological footprint, it has not always been in the early instances, at least such an easy process of uh, getting rid of a car and the car, which gives you this sort of instantaneous access. And now we have to think about it some more. Well, maybe a planet in which we, we think about things more and do a few less things and do them slower will be the kind of, kind of contribution we can make to the future. So thanks for your time. Uh, let me see now, uh, the next time we meet, that will be 2016. Uh, I promise you, I'll be there in person. <laughs>